The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 10th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, we've got you covered. Send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tigers Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. Dow's up 142, S&P's up 27, uh, NASDAQ 100, 167. Russell's up two points, basically one point. Semis are up 79. Tranny's up five points. We've got gold trading down 22 bucks. Silver's off 47 cents. Lights recruit up a buck 23. Natural gas down a penny in a 30 year treasury. Up nearly one point. Trade down at 113.27. Now, leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you got Broadcom. That's a 25 point move, nearly 3%. Lamb Research, 19 point move, 3% there. KLA Corp down uh, is up uh, nearly 16 bucks, 3%. MicroStrategy, uh, 16 bucks, 3% there. Asmill Holdings, 13 bucks, 2%. Those are the movers. The Shakers, Diego, ADR, EA down 20 bucks. That's a nearly a 13% move. Illumina down 15 bucks or 13%. The Trade Desk, 13 bucks, 17% move there. Regenerating off 11. TKO Group Holdings down 8%. That's nearly a $7 move. So we've got plenty of movers and shakers, but let's begin the day. Let's actually begin the day with the question that came in from. Nicholas. Nicholas asked the question, is it time to go short the markets out there? Let me just reposition this here. And so I think that's a really a great question. So how are we going to answer that? We're going to answer it a couple different ways. We're going to take a look at our tools and our indicators out here. And let's begin by cer certainly making sure that you're aware of new daily profiles that have formed in three of the four equity future contracts. You're going to want to make note of these. Now, in the case of the ES Mini, upper left-hand side, you'll see that support is down at 43.39. You'll see resistance at 44.13. In the case of the NQ, it's a bearish structured, slightly bearish structured profile. The uh, ES Mini is a bullish structured profile. And this has support at 14. 996 and resistance at 15 453.75. So, Nicholas, if the answer to the question is yes, or even if it's maybe it's a it's a kind of a 50-50 um, and you're willing to take a, a risk on it, then right now is about as good a time as you're gonna get. Why? Because price is trading up towards the top of that profile. 14,429 is where the NQ is printing. 15,453 um, is the uh, resistance zone. So basically between now and that price level would be the area where you could put on a short position. We'll go take a look at the answer should you put on a short position. But if you're asking when and where would be the time, then you have to say it's basically just about right here, right now. With regard to the Dow Equity Future contract, now this is a, a narrow bodied um, a narrow bodied uh, profile that is formed with support at 33,880. The low of the day has been 33,913 out here. So this this is held. Question is, do we, I, I would prefer 
to answer your question this way, if you see a close in the Dow Equity Future contract below 33.880, then yeah, probably it is time to go ahead and take a, a short position. And the indices may be taken in the Dow. It's a little bit weaker than the NQ out there. But still, uh, you've got those new profiles, and those are important to have for you. In the case of the Russell 2000, it informed a new profile below price. Now, that meant that price was above that for more than two consecutive sessions. If it's only a counter trend move to the downside, where price would or should find support, would be between the range of 1681 to 1695 out there, because that was a bearish structured daily profile. So that's our first set of data and our first set of facts out there. Let's go take a look at, um, let's do this here, uh, daily and weekly. We're going to switch panels. Give me a moment here. We'll get over to the white background screens. And here on the white background screens, we're going to be able to take a look at these four daily equity future contracts along with their weekly counterparts down below. So beautiful rally that we had last week. Uh, you know, one of the best uh, of, of 2023 for sure. But what we can see in looking at that bottom panel is that each of these instruments, the Dow, we'll come back to that, has basically found resistance at its oscillator and change line. Now, in the case of the NQ, Nicholas, this is important. For example, if we saw a close about 15,453.75, that's the top of its daily profile, that would tell us that price likely, not guaranteed, but likely wants to go target the 15,719 level. But today is going to become, well, at least as 1112, today is going to become bar number nine of a TD nine count. As long as the day closes above the close of bar number five, the close of bar number five was 15, 232.50, you'll get that TD nine count pattern that will confirm today. Now, it'll complete on Monday, but a price close above that level, again, that level was the top of its profile. On a weekly basis, we're going to get a top up of a green oscillator and change line. We have not seen that market condition for quite some time out there, and that would be a bullish condition out there. My apology, I'm just trying to get my cursor out here. We haven't seen that since July 28th. So we want to watch that. What is that? That level is specifically 15,466 as we speak right now. Call 14,467 would be the uh, number. So watch that for a price close. Now, in the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it is actually testing. It closed just slightly above it last week, it being the oscillator change line. But even if it does close above it this week, there's resistance right at the 34,473 level. That's the top of its weekly profile. Now, if price were to take that out, then we'd have, because this is a Gartley buy pattern, then we'd have to say that the end, or the Dow equity future contract definitely wants to run higher. So its real key level there is going to be 34,473, even though the top of the daily profile is 34,315. And the ES mini, what we so far have is a test and rejection. But what we don't have, in, and we had a test and rejection in essence of the top of its daily profile yesterday. We don't have a topping pattern here. Um, and we go take a consecutive days up or what have you. We go to the NASDAQ 100 or NQ. We had nine consecutive higher closes. So, you know, the market had to pull back. Was yesterday just a one day wonder on a pullback? I don't know. We're going to continue to try to answer this question. So to how are we going to do that, Steve-O? Well, one of the ways we're going to do that is we're going to look what's underneath the covers when we get back from this break. And that means we're going to look at the Magnificent 7. See how those are performing. Why the Magnificent 7? Because inside the NDX 100, they represent about, what was it, 44%. Uh, so these seven stocks are all we have to analyze to try to understand and answer Nicholas's question. Is it time to go short the NDX 100? We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report? For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN Educating Investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're trying to answer Nicholas's question. It's time to go short. The uh, NASDAQ 100, we're looking at, we, we spent that first uh, session looking at the NQ itself, its profile levels, really the equity future contracts, just to get a general feeling of where we're at. Now what we've got up here are the uh, Magnificent 7. They represent, uh, I think, about 44%, give or take, of the weighting inside of the NDX 100. So when we take a look at Apple, it is going to form bar number 8 today of a TD9 count. There's also an A to B equals CD pattern. In order to achieve the one-to-one -one level, its price target is 185.46. But here's the the B to C retracement. Let me get my cursor out here. In the case of Apple, took place on the uh, days of uh, November 2nd, that high down to low on November 3rd. Now that retracement was about 37 percent, 36.58 to be exact. Pretty close to the 0.382 retracement. So we're going to say this qualifies as an A to B equals CD pattern. The interesting thing here, they've got two patterns that are at play. Typically, if what you do is basically a 0.382 retracement as your B to C leg, odds favor, 60% or more, odds favor you can do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C D pattern. The one to one point two seven two would get you up to one eighty eight. Now, we're gonna respect that T D nine count. Bar number eight is likely to form today. Bar number nine, that means on Monday, all it needs is a close above the close of bar number five. That would be one eighty one eighty two. So it does look like Apple will get us a T D nine count top. So I would say today perhaps is not the time, just simply with regard to Apple, that is, Nicholas. Apple is suggesting that it's going to move higher. And that will certainly help to keep the NDX 100 moving higher as well. Microsoft is one to watch today. And the reason it's one to watch today is because yesterday it completed its one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern the upside. Why do I say completed? I say that because it was a bear sash candle. Now, if price is able to close above yesterday's high, it's traded above yesterday's high, Nancy. That would negate that signal and tell us that we're headed higher. 
Um, so right now, what you want to watch is 364.79 at day's end. If price closes above that, Microsoft has given us a signal that it wants to move higher out there. Now, move higher to where? Turns out the 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD pattern that is underway here. Well, actually, that's a, that would be the – let me let, – let, hold on a second. I'm sorry. My other screen – uh, I just need to make one modification here. So give me a second because I used a different A to B equals CD way back when. So right now, this has achieved the one-to-one -one as we take a look at the one-to-one point two seven two price projection area. Nancy would be at 373.69. Nancy had asked about Microsoft. That's why I'm using her name here. If you take a look at the monthly, uh, the weekly time frame chart, even the monthly time frame chart, but the weekly is taken. Now, let me get back. I don't have the weekly here. All right, let's just switch panels. And gosh, I sure hope I remember to switch back when I go to the next thing. But let's just take a look at this. Let's do a thorough review. Uh, because Apple and Microsoft are the two top weightings, like 22%. So, Nicholas, going underneath the covers is what's helping you and I to really answer our question with regard, what are the odds? Or, what, you know, when is now the time to uh, take a short position inside the NQ? So now that we're on the, and I'm just going to turn on, uh, open up the weekly chart, period. So you can see... That A to B equals CD pattern. I'm not going to really worry about that. In fact, I'm just simply going to get rid of it. We're really looking at on a weekly basis what's Microsoft doing. It is taking on the swing point from July 17th. Now, big volume on that week. It was 228 million shares. We're not going to get anywhere near that today. But if you do get a close above that level, you're um, at all-time highs. Yeah, 366.78. And to me, that says that we had higher as well. We take a look at that monthly time frame chart. You'd be above all resistance levels out there. I mean, this could be a gigantic A to B equals CD the upside. I don't want to go there just yet. Um, but uh, right now, what you want to watch, at least today, Nancy, is Microsoft and whether or not it can take out yesterday's high. And again, that number was uh, 364.79 out there. That's also the top of that daily profile. So right now, let's just go with the fact that Microsoft. Now, this is going to form bar number eight here, too. But And so this could form a TD9 count top on Monday or Tuesday of next week out there. But this still says today would be too early. Maybe we got it. we're going to have to take a look at this on, on Monday, Monday, Tuesday. In the case of uh, Google, there's no top in place. In fact, Google must spike above yesterday's high be, by, between now and Tuesday. At least that's one of the things that it's got to do. Right now with bar number eight, it has to close the day in order to retain this pattern, close the day above 131.45. But in order to get to a TD9 count pattern, price has got to spike above that 133.96. There is not a top inside of Google as we speak right now. And uh, today's Initial pullback has been nothing more than a test of support, both the top of the daily profile and the stocks that are in change line. This says strike three. This is not giving us a sell signal, not the top three instruments inside of uh, the NDX 100. I believe that the top three, because we'd put both Googles together, would be somewhere right around 26, 27 percent. We take a look at Amazon. It absolutely has formed a top. It's a TD9 count top. Now, no matter what kind of top you form, or what type of bottom you form, what kind of top you form out here, all it does is give uh, the ability for price to pull back and test support. Where's the first levels of support inside of Amazon? The top of the profile is 143.87, so that's not support. It's trading below that, and it's a bearish structured profile. That says it's really important to watch 139.87. Buyers and sellers are there. So far, that level is held. If that level failed, meaning it closed below 139.87, that would then suggest a move back to 137.28 or 135.21. Those would still just be tests of support. You've got to break support to tell us that that top was truly meaningful. But yes, in Amazon, you do have a, a top out there. In the case of NVIDIA, you don't. Price must spike above yesterday's high anytime between now and Tuesday in order to, well, today that would trigger, well, it won't trigger bar number eight. It would be a active bar number eight from the standpoint that a high must occur on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So the level to be watching here, if you get a spike above 482.30, this could be setting up a TD nine count pattern. But again, this says today would be too early. Tesla? consolidating with inside its daily profile, not giving us much of a signal here. And finally, we take a look at Facebook. Today, we'll become bar number nine of a TD9 account as it deals with resistance at its breakdown level. And that was at 325.94. So I'm thinking that what the, the answer to your question, Nicholas, is no, I think today is too early, and this needs to be revisited on Monday and Tuesday of next week out there. So I hope that answers your question. I hope that answers a lot of people's questions with regard to what's going on inside the uh, markets out there. And I think 
think the NDX 100 is one of the places where we've got to get our P's and Q's. The other area to get our P's and Q's from is going to be the semiconductor index, right? So let's take a quick peek at that before we get back to requests out here, before we actually begin taking a look at requests. When we take a look at the semiconductor index out here, what do we see? We see no top whatsoever. None. Now, it can be a top just getting back to your breakdown level resistance. That's at 35.5723. We're at 35.39 right now. But with regard to topping patterns, other than that, we don't have anything. And if you look at the weekly time frame chart, which has a Gartley buy pattern, price right now running into resistance, that's that green oscillator and change line. Microsoft still showing? Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, uh, sorry, I did forget to make that change. Well, son of a thank you, John. I appreciate that. Um, Shoot. I hate doing that. Ugh. Okay. Well, take a look at the stocks. I'm going to go back and put up those charts there for the uh, Magnificent 7. But here's the semiconductor index. Again, no topping pattern whatsoever. Nothing. No A to B equals CD pattern. No nothing. The only thing is that key level of resistance, that breakdown area at 3557. Here I was getting to the weekly chart. If there's a close today above 3544. There's a close above 35.44. That says the weekly chart. That'd be the first time that we'd see a close above the green oscillator and change on the weekly basis for quite some time. That would be a bullish signal. Right now, you can see on the monthly basis, it is a bullish signal. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. Let's go to our first request out here, a second request, really, for the uh, day uh, coming in from Vicky. This was from yesterday. Vicky, want to take a look at the KRE out here. And when we take a look at this, I don't have a uh, – well, I take this back. There is a certainly a sell the D point pattern that was confirmed out here. Vicky on November the uh, 6th. And now, again, you get a topping pattern out here. What does price do? It pulls back to support. That's exactly what it's testing today. And support is both its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 4087 and the top of its profile at 47. So the move lower may be over inside the uh, regional banking uh, sector out there. On a weekly time frame, we're trading below profiles out there, so it's not the greatest of messages. You're consolidating with inside profiles on the monthly time frame. So is this a buy? You know what happens is that when we get to a level of support, on a daily time frame, we like to see some type of bottoming signal on the short-term charts. And when I take a look at a 30-minute chart out here, I don't have one, Vicky. I don't have, and that's on the 30 minute. I can change this to, let's say, a 65 minute chart. Just as another example, one of the other time frames that we would use for an instrument that trades for 390 minutes a day. Now, on a 65 minute chart, there is a TD nine count pattern that is going to confirm at 1140. So, another nine minutes from now, and that pattern will complete then another 65 minutes after that. So, that would be what? I said 1140, that would be 1245 out there. So, with quarter one, on a short-term basis, the KRE should have a bottom, and as long as it remains above that oscillator and change line, it would be suggesting to an eye a move up to 4192, 4209, or 4218. That doesn't mean that it has bottom on the daily time frame, uh, but it, uh, it it adds to the idea that that has some potential. Uh, to it. With regard to the KRE, if we take a look at its daily cycle to the downside, what we're in right now is potentially day number five. That's if we get a close below yesterday's low. We have seen this move lower for six consecutive sessions here recently, so it wouldn't be out of the question to finish lower today and do so for the next couple of days and then get that typical two to three day rally that would typically uh, form out there. So has it bottomed? It's got potential out there. Watch the 65 minute chart. Um, and if you get a close below 4077, the answer to that question is absolutely not. So I hope that answered the question. I think you're also maybe trying to add to a position, or maybe you're trying to add to the position inside of PayPal. So let's take a look at PayPal. And with regard to PayPal, we'd be looking for some type of bottom. First, when we look at the daily time frame chart, here's what we know. Price is trading above resistance. The resistance would have been at 5284. I don't see a bottom, but maybe there was an A to B equal CD to the downside that was confirmed with this gap to the upside on the trading day of November 2nd. If we look at that, I don't need to go back and take a look at that because on the weekly basis, last week, much like we took a look at with many of the indices, equity future contracts, and also instruments, you have a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Many of them have Gartley buy patterns, but basically last week was a bottom, a significant bottom a pattern for a number of the weekly uh, charts out there. Well, PayPal is one of them. So that'd be a reason. Now, what PayPal's been unable to do is get above the center of that uh, weekly profile out there. And on the monthly chart, it has not confirmed a bottom there. So let's assume we've got one on the daily, one on the uh, weekly chart out here. Where would you add to a, a position? Well, the answer to that question would be a pullback to 5284. That's a top that would really be testing support. We're not testing support there. The other option would be taking a look at those intraday charts. Here's a 30-minute chart for PayPal. What do we know? We know it has a TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom completed at 1030. Now, if there were to be a close below 5394, not a test of that level, but a close below 5394, the message of PayPal is probably it's an A to B equals CD to the downside on the 30 minute time frame, and it could bring out its breakout area back at 5114. We're trading at about 5419 as we speak right now. So you do have the potential for a bottom inside of PayPal on that 30-minute time frame chart. The first thing, its first objective would be to bounce up towards that oscillator and change on a 54, 58 or thereabouts. And a close above that would say, oh, I want to move up to 55, 74. We don't have that signal just yet, but you do have a TD9 count bottom pattern. So it's the best that I can. So if you're looking to add, you know, this could be a place out there. I just would like to have a better signal on the daily time frame out there, and I just don't have anything to work with. So I uh, hope that helps you out, uh, Vicky. Thanks for waiting an extra day to get to those uh, symbols out there, and uh, much appreciated. Uh, Alton wants to take a look at Pfizer. We've looked at Pfizer, I think we've looked at Pfizer a few times uh, during the week out here. No problem to look at it again. And Alton's question is where the Sam heck is support. Now, he didn't exactly say it like that, but, um, but I'm saying it like that. 
And the answer is, well, it could be whatever the low of this week is. That could be support. And the only reason I can say that, because this will complete a TD9 count bottom this week. Now, the cool thing there, Alton, is that I don't know if you're long this position, you're trying to enter into a position, is that if we see a close below this week's low, whatever that is, next week, that tells us about a strong downward momentum move. Now, the monthly chart is preparing to form a TD9 count bottom, but that's not until month's end. The daily time frame chart has a wave number seven bottom. It has a roads momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. That requires a bullish reversal candle. So I would wait for that before you would fire away at anything here. And then what you've got to deal with or what it has to deal with is resistance levels. Right now, the first resistance level is 29.95. The second is at uh, 30.52, followed by 31.11, followed by 31.71 out there. So those would be the battles that you'd have to be dealing with. So you're asking where is support? The best level of support that I can give you with regard to Pfizer at this moment in time, let's just pull back the monthly chart to see what the heck we're looking at here, is, uh, is going to be a low at the end of this month. Now, curiously enough, there's a swing point from March of 2020. And that March 2020 swing point did volume of 967 million shares. Last month, you did 681. So far, it's just so short into the month, we're at about 200 million 193 to be exact out there 246 let's say if you were to break the month into threes it's still coming down to that swing point with light volume but maybe what you like to do is see that low get tested and that low is 27 uh, 88 out there near 29 bucks as we speak right now so there's potential with regard to uh, pfizer out there um and i do hope that that helps you out alton and thank you so much for uh the request Let's get to our next request out here. This is coming from Rachel. Rachel wants to take a look at ticker symbol BLTE. Was I able to get that out there? Let's see. BLTE. So we take a look at BLTE, and I believe Rachel was just recently got into a position here. So, Rachel, here's the one thing that we know, and that's that two days ago, what BLTE, this is Belight Bio did, was it formed a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. See that little bear sash candle that formed out there? That was the confirmation. We can see the triggers of uh, the Rhodes Mintum Indicator signal, and the uh, trigger gets confirmed with a, in this case here, a bearish reversal candle. Now, what we can see that took place yesterday was price got down and tested support. And that support was the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. And that support is 37.14. So in essence, we have a bearish, we've, we've got a bearish pattern, Roach Mentum Indicator, that has already tested support and it's held. I'm going to put this in the neutral camp. I know you're considering maybe exiting the position. I'd only consider doing that if price closed below 37.14, especially knowing that we got the top from two days ago. Yesterday was the uh, test of support out there. And when I take a look at the weekly time frame chart, last week it negated its TD9 count top. In fact, there is an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Was that B point taken out with volume? The B point had volume of 582,000 shares last week. This did 1.1 million shares. We're going to further take a look at BLTE for Rachel. We get back from the spring. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at this uh, stock, B. LTE, Belight, I think that's how you pronounce it, Bio Inc. And this has a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Now, it's got some deal, it's got some resistance that has to work with because of that daily Rogement indicator top. And not until it clears the high of November 7th, that high is 4060, will totally negate that pattern out there. It could just be consolidation. But this has a A to B equals CD on a weekly basis that has a confirmed uh, price objective of 52.35. So I would definitely stay inside that, that position. You can consider closing if you get a close below 37.14 out there. But right now, uh, Rachel, I think you're in a, a good spot. So I do hope that that helps you out. And let's go to our next request out here. And eh, I kind of screwed up. Sorry about that. I think uh, prep everything. Let's go to, uh, you're just going to have to wait for it to populate. And the ticker symbol here is BUR. And this is for um, Jack, double, triple sevens out there. Uh, James, no, it's double O seven. That, that's just the one arm bandit, Jack. And uh, so we're taking a look at BUR, and uh, I think it was just for an analysis. So this formed a nice TD9 count bottom. You've got a new profile that formed yesterday. It's bearish in structure out there, so price is consolidating within it. It being 1347 as resistance. Between 1322 and 1347 is the resistance zone, and support is down to 1286. Now, we don't have any kind of a topping pattern out there. So if it can clear 1347, then where price should head to, a jack is up to the 1435 level. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, TD9 count top gets back close to its breakout level. The breakout level being 1195. Uh, price is trading with inside a bullish structured profile. It closed above the center last week. It's trading above the center this week. Odds favor this wants to go up to 1393. A close above 1347 would definitely confirm that piece of the puzzle. Now, on a monthly basis, you've got a big old TD9 count top with price consolidating with inside its profile, but still trading above that green oscillator and change line. Resistance here is 1404. So, with regard to Burr, What's the overall call here? It looks pretty positive. Daily bottom, weekly bullish structure, trade above the center. 
um, monthly, you know, kind of suspect there, just a consolidation. But it uh, doesn't look it doesn't look so bearish as we speak right now. So, Jack, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for on Bird. Nancy, we covered Microsoft, I think. So I think I've given you everything that you were looking there. If not, please let me know, and we'll try to get back to uh, that. Another question came in to take a look at XPEV. This came in by email, and the person sending this, would you just let me know what your name is? I can't tell what your name is even from the uh, messages that you're sending. would just be nice to know. But with regard to that, if we take a look at XPEV, I think the question was, is this another November top out there? Now, the, I don't know if we can – let me try this on, on my other screen. Let me just see if I can pull up a seasonal for XPEV out here, see if anything pops up. Oh, it does. Okay, XPEV. And XPEV is uh, a, a Chinese something or other. Don't know what it is. But the question was something, another November top out here. So if you want to take a look at the seasonal pattern, I hope the screen doesn't go dark if it does. And Stevie's got problems. November 30th is when this typically forms its top out there. Seasonally speaking, that's over. Well, I'm sorry, that's three. Oh. All you've got is three years worth of data. There's not enough data here. Three years worth of data is not enough touch points. But, hey, over those three years, yes, it has a, a November top. It's at the end of the month. Is it another November top or not? That I don't know. looks like maybe it topped out before then. Um, what do we have here? Looks like price wants to pull back as trade below red oscillator and change line to the support zone on its daily basis. That would be between what, 1460 and 1497. We take a look at the weekly time frame out here. Price is back inside its profile. It was bearish in structure. If this closes below the center line, the center line, I believe, is at about 1523, uh, and you're at 1526 or so. It closed below 1523. It could get us down to 1244 out there. Um, I'm not seeing anything here to suggest that this thing will rally, at least right now. Just simply that price is likely to come back and test support between 1416, 1460 and 1497. I believe you also wanted to take a look at FXI. I think there were two requests that you had sent in. As we take a look, we'll get those screens here to populate. And after that, we're going to go take a look at CRISPR, CRSP, and that's for Greg. So let's see if we can get FXI to populate here. Again, hard on these Chinese stocks because of the currency issues that you've got for me to get a really great read. But And, and I think you get a better read if you can find out the constituents inside there and go take a look at those. I know I don't have access to most of those. But if we do take a look at FXI, trading with inside its daily profile, it's bearish in structure. We're below the center. We're now below the red oscillator and change line. This says FXI wants to target 2504. That's the bottom of its daily profile. Let's go ahead and get to CRSP up on our screen out here and try to analyze this for uh, Greg. And as this populates, CRSP, I need to get back to another spot inside the uh, den, see if there's any other requests out there. Um, XPEV is an EV company. Thank you, Joey. So now we're taking a look at uh, CRISPR out here. And when we take a look at uh, CRISPR Therapeutics, what we know is what? We know that price is trading with inside a pretty wide profile. When I say wide, 46.42 is support and 58.81 is resistance. Now, it's sort of bullish in structure. Uh, and so you'd have to say the buy zone is between 46.42 and 50.55. You don't have to say that. I've got to say that. And the weekly chart looks pretty good uh, because price is above the top of its profile out there. And the monthly chart... It's above its red oscillator and change line. So that's pretty good, too. So, Greg, the question is, where is support? Uh, and I would say that if price could pull back and test and reject the green oscillator and change line, and the green oscillator and change line would be right now is price at 47.90. So I'd say the buy zone would be between 46.42 and 47.90. Now, that doesn't mean it's not going to bounce today. Why would it bounce today, Stevie? Because on a 30-minute time frame chart, this has a confirmed TD9 count bottom. So the first thing that it ought to do is bounce up to the oscillator and change line. Turns out that's also the bottom of the 30-minute profile. So 5097 is in the cards and 5117. And then above that, you've got another battleground. That'd be 5157. So in order for CRISPR to tell you that it's ready to really rock higher, it needs to close above 5259. That would give the 30-minute time frame chart a change in trend. Otherwise, its trend is really to the downside, but it has formed a short-term bottom out there. But I would say the better entry price, if that's what you're looking for, Greg, would be, again, between 46.42 and 47.87. Inside the Tiger's Den, looks like we've got a request for McGuppy wants to take a look at the trade desk. TTD is the uh, ticker symbol. 
He still owns some. It's getting crushed today. Should you buy back or sell the rest? So we take a look at TTD. Oh, you're not kidding. So this is negating its TD9 count bottom pattern out there. So it formed that bottom. It's trading below a bullish structured profile out there. Let's go to the weekly charts. Weekly chart shows that a close today below 64.56, McGuppy, is going to be a close below its breakout level. That's not good. So where's the next price target to the downside? Right now, as I take a look at the TTD charts, it would be between 42.78 and 50.33. That's the buy zone of its monthly set of profiles. However, on the daily time frame, am I I'm on the way background charts? Yeah. On the daily time frame, this has triggered a road's momentum indicator signal. And that would say if we see a bullish reversal candle, you're not going to see that today. If we see a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a bottom. Buy or sell. Look on a 30 minute time frame chart real quickly here. I don't see a bottom here. Bottom pattern that is. We put up 65 real quickly here before we have to go to that hard break out there. We've got about 10 seconds. I don't see a bottom here either. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors. So real quickly, back to TTD for McGuppy. McGuppy, uh, you know, if you get a close below 64.56, odds favor this is going to move lower. It could be a false breakdown move out there. But um, 
and that's really the best information I can give to you, everything that we've covered here. I don't see a weekly A to B equals CD pattern because this retracement uh, on the move higher into September 15th uh, would be about an 80 some odd percent retrace, 80 something percent retracement. So it's above the 0.786. So we're not going to bring the A to B equals CD pattern, at least for the weekly time frame, into this. Uh, let's uh, finish out the show by taking a look at a couple requests to take a look at both gold and um, gold and the uh, GDX out here. So we'll get one screen that's going to show us both. It's going to show us gold, silver, and the uh, GDX. Now, in the case of the GDX out there, it negated its TD9 count bottom yesterday. It did that when it closed below 27.61. So now what we've got out here, what's its next downside price target? Well, its next downside price target is 26.26 out there. Uh, a bullish reversal candle looks like it would form a buy the D point pattern, but I want to make sure about that retracement out there. But nonetheless, its next price target is 2626 out there. If we take a look at gold, what could get in the way of that? The thing that could get in the way of that would be the fact that gold is going to form a TD nine count bottom pattern today. It's going to complete that pattern. It's going to com not complete it. It's going to form that pattern today. It will complete that pattern on Monday. And we know that there's a good directional correlation between gold and the GDX out there. So what happens if uh, we don't get a confirmed bottom? Well, we'll know that maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday out there. Um, but uh, you've got a nice buy the D point currently buy pattern, quite frankly, inside of Goldilocks. However, in that weekly chart, price is back below the top of its profile and uh, could be heading down to 1933 or even 1901. But with regard to gold, we're really going to have to wait till Monday out there to get any kind of inclination as to uh, what's going on, at least in my opinion here. So the GDX says it wants lower price. You know, how certain am I that it's going to get back to the uh, breakout level of 2626? Not that certain because it's going to depend upon Goldilocks. And if silver can hold that 2253 by day's end, that would be another strong message with regard to the metals. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for being here all week. Stay tuned for the great programming. I'll be back with you on a magnificent Monday. Please have a fantastic weekend. Be safe out there, but have lots of fun. Take care now.